Uh, be prepared here today. I'm going to jump around. All right? I may not go question by question because I want to save it for you guys to do on your own. And I may even just go to the homework too. All right, to make sure you guys get exposure to all the different types of problems I need you to. Uh, here's our topic today. First, to first topic is going to be what's called a composite figure. Basically, a composite figure is something you don't know what it is, but you can break it up into figures that you're familiar with. All right, so if you take a look at uh, the first composite figure A here, I have no idea what that is. I don't have a formula for it because I don't know what it is. But it is, a, it is a figure I can break up into figures I know and have a formula for. All right, so take a look at this. Could I break, how can I draw a line or multiple lines in so I form a figure I know area, an area formula for? That's what I want you to take a look at. Can you give me a horizontal, vertical line I can draw in and say, oh, now it's a blank and a blank that I'm familiar with and I have a formula for now. All right, there's a couple different ways you could break this up. I'm not a big, some kids would like to add on to it. They like to add on or trying. Uh, you can do that. I'm not going to show that though, but you, that, uh, that is something you can do though. If you're comfortable doing that, I just like to take the figure and break it up as is not add on to it. All right. So talk to me. How do you want to break this bad boy up? 12. How do you want to break this beast up? Horizontal or vertical line? Horizontal, so that's going this way. So I'm assuming you want me to draw in this right here. Is that what, we're good? Okay, so what did Rachel just break this up into? Rectangle on the bottom, trapezoid on top. Now, also, if anybody was gonna go this way, the vertical line, this going this way, rectangle and trapezoid, just in different spots. We're all gonna get the same area at the end though. Okay, we're all gonna get the same area. All right, so I'll go with Rachel's idea, draw this horizontal line over. So let's do area of a rectangle plus area of the trapezoid. All right, so let's go rectangle, length times width. So what do you got here for me? Length times width. What's the length and the width here I'm going to use to find the area of the rectangle? 13, Charlie, hello. Eight. Eight and for the rect. Oh, sorry. Maybe your rectangle, right? That's fine. Fine. That's fine. You keep keep doing you. Okay, you got me there. Five and fifteen. Way to transition, though. Way to transition. All right, five times fifteen. Everyone, see where she got that. All right, now go to the trapezoid on top. One half the height times the two bases added together. Well, first, let me start here. What are the two bases? Name the two base lengths of that trapezoid on top. Nine. 15 and? Eight. eight. Good. 15 and eight. All right. How about the height of that trapezoid now? The height of that trapezoid. And remember, you can, go, you can draw it in or you can use this piece here. That's also the height of the trapezoid. What's the height for us here? Uh, five. Is that confident seven? Oh, I was doing the other one. Too. Oh, worry, worry, worry. Okay, yep. everyone's uh, doing the other. You're fine. Yes, uh, it is seven. Yeah, it's seven. It is seven. Yep. That's the go-to now. Oh, I was doing another one. Yep. Good job, everyone. So I'm gonna get. Let's see here. Seventy-five for the rectangle. And if I do it this way for the trapezoid, I get eighty and a half. So you guys that drew in the other line, no problem, no problem. Did we get 155 and a half for the total area, no matter how we sliced it? We're okay. I'm gonna give you time to work on B and C in class. Any issues with this? If you sliced it differently, it didn't get 155 and a half. Okay, I'm gonna go, can everyone go to D please? Again, I'm gonna skip around on you. All 
All right, let's label our parts here. GB is 4.6. MH is 6, HT is 15, got it. And find the area of polygon MB, ATH, MBATH. Anybody know what that thing is? Me neither. I don't. The heck is that thing? So if I don't know what it is, I don't have a formula for it. All right, and everyone see that it's shaded. Everyone see that I shaded that polygon in for you. All right, so I want to talk right now. How do you find the area of a shaded region? All right, I don't know what it is, so how can I find the area of a shaded region? Here you go. Here's the formula I'm going to have you use. Area of the shaded region. Ready? It's going to be the area of the whole thing, and I'm going to take out minus. What do you think I'm going to take out? Well, in this case, it's a triangle, but it may not be in other problems, just the unshaded, all right? So I'm going to take the whole thing, and I'm going to subtract out the area of the unshaded, which probably I'll be able to find, okay? So there's two types of problems I'm going to throw at you today. One where you break it up into figures you know, and the second type is called the shaded region problems. All right, what is the whole thing here? Tell me what figure the whole thing is. 13, Try. what's the whole thing? Okay. Rectangle, so I'm gonna go length times width. Minus, what figure is the unshaded part? One, yep, uh, 12, unshaded, what figure is that? Triangle, so one half BH from our formulas. All right, let's fill in the correct numbers now. I made this one, this first one nice and easy to plug in numbers. What's the length and the width of your rectangle? Eight. Six and 15. Six and 15, good. Minus one half. All right, what's the base and height of that unshaded triangle? Base and height of that unshaded triangle. 13, Charlie, again, let's roll. Good. Hold on. Hold on. Just can you stop there for a sec? How did we get bases 15? It's a rectangle. Opposite sides congruent. So that side's got to be 15 with a height of 4.6. Good. And there we go. Fifty five point five. Looks good. So we could either break it up into smaller figures or in this case, area of a shaded region. Whole minus unshaded. Anything there? Because I'm going to go to a homework question now and then I'm going to leave the rest to you guys. All good. All right. Now, once I find the unshaded, do something with it, all right? That is the, that's the top of the mountain where I need you to get to today. You find the area of unshaded correctly. Now I want you to do something with this area now. All right, so let's do uh, number two from tonight. Let's do number, question two from tonight's assignment. Just started unrep not repping the squad anymore. No, let's get the top. Uh, okay. Rock Solid Concrete Company. There you go. Pave a rectangular area surrounding a circular fountain with a diameter of eight feet. Yep. So what's the area that must be paved? AKA the shaded region. All right, what's the area that must be paved? The shaded region. So again, area of the shaded, and I don't expect you guys to write this. I'm just writing it out so we can see it. Whole minus unshaded. All right, talk to me. What's the whole figure? That's a 11. Yep. Uh, nine. What's the whole thing? Rectangle. So length times width. 
minus what's the unshaded figure? That's a we'll get one. Eight. Sophia. Um, unshaded figure is a circle. circle. That's on your formula sheet if you forget. Pi r squared. I know this is an easy one, but I just want to make sure you're following along. What's the length and width of my rectangle? Nine. 15 and? Yep. Minus pi. Read the directions. What's my radius of the circle? Read your directions. Seven. Four, because the diameter was eight. All right, set in the givens. Diameter is eight, so four squared. It says round fine to the nearest square foot, so we're rounding. That's on my answer key. Am I really going to trust you? Is that the final answer? The final answer, yeah. This is a so that's what I'm about to write on the board. Yep. Possibly embarrass myself. Yep. That's okay. All right, there you go. All right, I would have never forgave you. Everyone's good. Four ninety. Four hundred ninety what square feet? Any questions before I get into the second part? Again, this is where I need you to be before you leave class today. The company's going to charge me $8.95 per square foot. How much is it going to cost to pave the, what are we paving? To pave the area. All right, so they're going to charge me $8.95. Now, here's what always happens when I introduce this. All the kids, all you guys know you need to use the $8.95 somehow. But now you're in your head, you're like, oh, shoot. Am I multiplying by 8.95 or dividing by 8.95? And you end up making just a, a guess, a 50-50 shot in the dark. All right. So what do I do with that 8.95 and the 4.90? Do I divide them or do I multiply them? Some of you might be confident about this answer. Some of you may not be. So let me show you a method that will always work. If you're unsure what to do with the number they provide, set up a proportion. Set up a proportion. How? Whatever they give me. Ready? 895. Take a look. 895 equals one square foot. That's what they tell me. 895 per square foot. We all see where that came from. Over. Where do you think I'm going to put the 490? Keep the units with the same units. Feet go with? Feet. How much is it going to cost? So I'm telling you, use it if you're unsure. You're like, I don't know what to do with that number, divide or multiply. And that's an okay feeling, but set up a proportion. And now do you see exactly what you need to do? Yeah, I need to multiply it, don't I? And remember, this is money, money. So I want to round to the nearest hundredth here. All right, this is money. like a big number. Charlie, does it look okay? Okay. This group here, does it look okay? Okay. Look okay back there, guys. I'm not even gonna add that's a disaster back there too. Even if I combine these both groups, I wouldn't trust them. Anything? Okay, here's what I want you to do. Go back to your notes. Go back to your notes. 
Go back to your notes from today. You guys have B, C, and E. I'm going to write the answers up on the board. If you just can't get to those answers, call me over. Okay? Call me over. If you want to work with other people, that's fine. I know how this class rolls, though, but... All right, I'll put the answers up on the board for B, C, and E, and then you're off to uh, the assignment, which the answers are on classroom anyway. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get it done. We're rounding to the nearest tenth. Letter E, that's a toughie. That's going to make you think, but you can handle it. Letter E is going to be a toughie. Here are the uh, answers to all three of them up here. Call me over if you got any problems. 